Alright, so the anticipation on this has been really eaten away at me, and I probably should have filmed this video earlier today. Um, if you've been watching my Facebook page, you've seen little snippets of this. At least you've seen renderings. And I did a little contest where I had two people that ended up winning. And the contest was guess the specs, and you win a prototype frame. So now I'm going to show you that prototype frame. It finally just came in from Armitan Productions, and it's really cool in my opinion. So um, here it is. This is the XLR4. Now, what this is is supposed to be a philosophy of lightweight. And uh, the idea here was to build something that's a little bit different from everyone else. Um, try some new things out. You know, some of them may be wrong, some may be right. But I wanted to do something unique. So, XLR4 follows the two different trends. Um, one of them is lightweight, which you'll see. Actually, I'll show you an arm. Here's an arm. You'll see by the arm, these are really not very wide. This is actually four millimeters thick, so it is thick, but it's only, I think, eight millimeters wide or something like that. So it's about two thirds of the width of an SCX arm. So the idea is to have really lightweight frame, um, really agile, and then the other design trend philosophy that I've seen lately was the stretch X. So if you look closely, you notice the spacing front to back between the props is much larger than it is left to right and uh, the concept here now I can't verify this because this is the first time I've done a stretch X is that on the pitch axis you get more stability from having the arms spread out you have more lever arm action and then on the roll axis because they're still so close together you get quick rolls and Supposedly this is more ideal for racing because you're not going to do a whole bunch of pitch adjustment You're going to pretty much lock into a pitch and uh, you're going to do most of your turning using your roll and some yaw So that's the two de design philosophies. I've employed here. I've obviously tried to make something that's completely unique um, to, to space cowboy drone design and uh, You know it uses a standard HS 1177 um, I switched to a slightly different type of VTX than I've been using. So instead of having the SMA on the VTX, it has a pigtail extension to the back. Now, the other thing that's unique about this frame, and I shouldn't say it's unique actually, but compared to my other frame designs, is it's designed for a 4-in-1 ESC. So you're not going to be putting ESCs on the arms. You're just going to run the motor wires into the center of the frame where you're going to have a 4-in-1 ESC. And these are starting to become more popular. Um, I think traditionally they've been available in 20 amp versions, but I saw the other day that Sunrise Cicada had a 30 and a 35 amp, I want to say, in the same form factor as the 20 amp, so um, that'll be cool and I might try to get my hands on those. Now to keep this thing lightweight, um, you know, like I said, I've made all the plates minimalist. I mean, this thing's tiny. Look at how big my hand is and how big the frame is. I mean, it's not that big. It's a 185. It's a uh, four inch props, at least on this version. And I'm actually using 1806 motors, but instead of using traditional, just 1806s, DYSs, something cheap, we kind of designed around these T-Motor F30s. Um, now at the moment, this is the only motor that fits this frame, as far as I know. I need to go look through some other motor options and check what the specs are. But basically, um, you know, I'm becoming a little bit of a T-Motor fanboy, I have to say got the F40s, I got the six F60s, I got the new F42s, and they've all been great. So I wanted to try the F30s, and um, these are probably some of the nicest 1806 motors on the market. Now, they have a steel shaft that's hollow for the lock nut to go on, but that steel shaft also goes down into the bottom, and as you can see, unlike most 1806 motors that have a 2 mil shaft, this one looks like it's at least 3. So that's a nice feature because traditionally these motors have tended to be weak, um, meaning that you know you hit the bell on anything and you bend the shaft. And to be honest, I had a tweaker that had 1806 motors on it. They were T motors. Um, they had a two millimeter shaft, and that was the worst part. Anytime I hit the props on something, I bent the shaft, and it was always a pain to replace it. So these are a lot nicer. Um, they have a much stronger shaft than the older motors, and I'm not sure if any of the other motors on the market in this size range have a three mil shaft. The other unique thing about these T motors is that they use a really odd size for the mounting screws. Now, in most cases, 
um, the motors that you find in this class use two millimeter screws and uh, when you go up to the 2204 motors, 05, 06 motors, they go to three millimeter screws. These are two and a half. So the arms are designed specifically for two and a half millimeter mounting holes. The spacing as far as the, the diameter is actually standardized and that would work with other 1806s but they probably rattle around because there's two millimeter hole in a two and a half millimeter slot. So anyways, um, there you go. That's the specifics of the frame and the, the equipment I've chosen to run on it. Now, right now, um, it's a little bit overweight of what I was hoping. I think I haven't quite gotten everything on here. Oh, gotta re-zero that. Now, the goal is to get this sucker down to around 200, okay? Right now it's around 225, which isn't bad. I mean, <clears throat> I need to do a little bit of wire clipping and soldering, but it's got all the heavy components on it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Just been talking so much that I need like a cold glass of water or something to drink. Anyways, it's not that bad. It's around 225, it says on there. That's with all the major components in it. Um, it will probably get to around 230, 235, um, but I'd like to be down at 200 because I'm going to run an 850 milliamp hour battery on this thing and I'm going to push it hard. And I think it can be done with the 1806s and the lightweight. I think it's going to be pretty agile. So anyways, that's the frame. That's the design intent behind it. Um, I'm going to post more videos of this when I get it done and get some flight time on it. I'm kind of excited because even if the prototype doesn't end up being the final version, um, the architecture is new for me. So, you know, being that it's a stretch deck, being that it's intended to be somewhat lightweight, um, you know, I can take the same architecture and kind of grow it for a 5-inch model maybe. Uh, we'll see. But for now, I'm starting on 4-inch, and this is the XLR4, and I'm going to go ahead and in the future, very soon, I'm going to post another video on how it goes together. So thanks for tuning in. Bye.